Hey guys, it's me, Missy, with Rusty Acrylics. And, and it's me, Rodney. Yep. So I got some kind of um, exciting, fun stuff that I'm wanting to do today. So yesterday I was at May May Made It, and I got these from her. So if you're a Made It, then you probably already know what these are. So she had their 49 in market. This one's landscape, and then this one is portrait. And I'm going to be playing with the portrait one and some new decoupage paper. And I'm going to show you a little bit of the decoupage paper that Rodney is. He's still working on it, so it's not online yet, but it'll be coming really soon. And it's really pretty, so I'm excited about it. But, um, yeah, so the link for these is in the comments or the description, description below. Yeah, so you can head over to Mamey Made It and grab you one of these. And then you can go to Rusty Relics and you can get some decoupage paper and some Dixie Bell chalk paint and have some fun. Now, I'm not doing anything to the inside of these. Um, I feel like that's a May May job, not yes. a Missy job. <laughs> so I'm only doing the outside and then I'm going to give her the books back and I'm going to let her do with what she wants to do on the inside, um, whatever she wants to do. So I'm just doing the outside. So... Okay, let me show you the one that I started working on already. I've already started it. Okay, so this one is the um, the portrait one, and I did paint it um, with some Dixie Belle chalk paint. This color is called Stormy Sea, I think is what I went with. Yes. Um, and then I decoupaged the side of it with a hem, and these are the, um, Rodney's still working on these, uh, decoupage papers, but I went ahead and um, snagged these. I already have them. Um... Okay, so because I painted my background a color, you know, you need it to be, uh, in order for your image to pop, you need it to be on white. So what I did was I sealed the back of the decoupage paper up with Mod Podge and I let that dry and then I came through with a thin white coat of cotton and um, painted the back of it so that way when it goes on it is the colors are still vibrant on the side I just painted it white and then decoupaged it so what I'll do is put this to the side and I'm going to go ahead and put my paint on this other one and while that's drying I'll come back to this one and kind of show you how I did that so I'm just going to work on both of them at the same time so this is this one. Tamith said, these albums are so much fun to create. Can't wait to see what you do with the covers. Oh, boy. <laughs> I can't wait to see what she's going to do with the covers either. I like how Mimi does hers. I So I think it'll be fun to decoupage it, but we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. I think she's a little stressed. Well, it's because like, I can see it in my brain, but... I got you. Can I get it out? I don't know. We've been experimenting with layering decoupage layering. papers to come so, up with different ideas. Again, I'm not going to do nothing to the inside of it, but I am going to leave this cardboard that comes in it with the pages just to protect the pages because I'm not going to do anything to the inside. So it's already white. So you could go straight into decoupaging on here um, because the white background is going to be perfectly fine. But for what I'm wanting to do, I'm wanting it to have a little bit of color and then... Um, as I tear out my papers. So I have this one. This one's new. It's online. I also have this tree. It's new and it's online. And then, of course, just a basic hem is which that's what I put on the side of this one. I just cut it to fit the side of it. So we're going to use all of these today. Tamith said that church is stunning. They are. It's very I, pretty. We, we put up a bunch of uh, really cool looking churches. Right. So I'm going with buttercream. So that way it has like a little bit of an antique look. And I'm just using these little paint brushes. Now, um, because this is, what do you call this? It's not, it's not wood. I mean, it's a. It's a it's a cardboard, but yeah, it's got a special coat. Right. On it. Okay. So, so paint will adhere. Right. So, but you don't want to soak this. Is what I'm trying to say. You don't want to wet this. Right. But and I my paintbrush is chipboard. That's, that's what it. Is. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, Tamitha. There it's you a go. Chipboard. There you go. I don't know why I couldn't think of it. I couldn't either. But and you just want to do a light. You don't want it to be heavy. 
and we're just going to give it a coat of the paint. You just don't want to wet this, but you know, chalk paint is thick, so it helps to start out with like a damp brush. And then as you're painting, if it still gets thick, um, you can add a little bit of water to your brush and then just, you don't want it drenched in water, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Tina asked, could you just do it without painting it? Oh, absolutely. Because it's already white, so your decoupage paper would just fit perfectly on it, like it would pop on it. Now, if you use the black one, then you're going to have to um, paint the back of it white like how I did the other ones so that way your image pops that way you're not having to paint the whole thing white right. you're just painting the back of the image so it really stands so out. so that way the image stands out and she did something really neat with it too she kind of antiqued the edge with a gold gilded and wax it's pretty cool Should yeah be. I'll show that because I still have the other one to do that one it was I just started it and I was like well I'll finish it. I thought I was going to have it finished before the live show, but I did not. But it's okay because I can work on it while this is drying and it's no big deal. No big deal. Janice says she did her first couple projects with the decoupage papers and she's hooked. She absolutely loves them. Good, good, good. That's exciting. So yeah, the reason why she's painting it this buttercream is she's like she's really enjoying the antique the, white color. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm just it. doing the antique white, and then it's it's not um it's not a it match it pairs up well with the rice paper, you know. It's not a cotton looks really good and makes everything pop but this one also works well with it too if you like the creamish antique white it's a it's a good one to do it works well with the decoupage paper kathy got her gnomes mounted to the frames and needs to add some decorations to the frame i think too like um what is the lightest brown Dixie Belle paint? That is a good question. Ooh, the lightest brown? The lightest brown. The lightest brown. Yep. That, that's a Rodney question. <laughs> I would actually have to compare them. Yeah. I would need to go to the store and, and look at the... Look at the color chart. I think the lightest brown would be a yellowish like sandbar. Burlap is burlap. Um, Burlap's a brown, but it's not. Is as, it is it darker or lighter? It's darker than sandbar. Is it okay? I was thinking I couldn't remember which one is um, pine cone, but it's pine cone's dark. It's dark. Um, chocolate is the darkest. No, coffee beans the darkest brown. You're right. Coffee. I forgot about coffee bean. Look at us debating the lightest brown. That's one of the new colors, but none of the new colors are brown, are they? Um, cobblestone is more, it's kind of like um, a tannish. Mud puddle, probably. If it's brown, true, if you're asking about true browns, Mud puddle or pine cone are good colors. Uh, the other one would be, like, like I said, sandbar. But sandbar is more of a khaki color. Yeah. But, you know, I consider khaki a brown color. Sandbar is what Tanya uses all the time. A craft, a craft brown color would probably be either pine cone or a mud puddle. I will say that painting this goes, um, it dries pretty quick, but it would as chipboard. So it kind of like absorbs it a little bit. 
that. I'm just trying to make sure that I have it. You can, Tina. Uh, Dixie Bell Paint Company has a really good color mixer on their website. Yes. That allows you to combine colors to get the exact, and it'll tell you the ratios. It will. Like most of the time, uh, there's a green color Missy likes, so she mixes it herself. Also, when we had the shortage of terracotta, we had to make our own terracotta using two parts rustic red and kernel mustard, one yeah. part kernel mustard. It'll, it'll tell you. But I had to get on their color design thing and try to come up with the best way to design the color that we were looking for to match their terracotta. And another thing, terracotta was, is only available in 16 ounce containers, so that it always makes it a challenge. Because mm -hmm. not everybody wants a 16 ounce container. Okay. So I'm going to let it dry, but like literally it dries pretty quick. It dries really fast yeah. because that's already dry. On yeah, that I can see it on the light. I'm trying not to mess the page with it. I'm trying to keep this in here. Not messing with that. Let me pop a link in the description of Dixie Bells. Uh, The color mixer. Yeah, it's very helpful when you're just trying to do a custom color. All right, I'm going to let this dry a little bit. Just a little bit more before I do anything else to it. Okay, so since that is such a bright color, it's a, it's, a light color, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Catherine we, Casey says she always loves seeing what Missy creates. Thank you, Kat. Um, so I don't have to seal up the back of these, but I'm going to tell you the process again on the back. All I did was to a thin uh, layer of Mod Podge on the back of it, and then I let it dry completely. And then I put a very thin layer of white paint um, after that was completely dry on it and then I've just let it dry and it's kind of stiff you know because it has Mod Podge and paint on it and is which when you go to tear it um, on both of these all I did was do it I didn't pre tear it I just did it on the back so you'll see when I go to tear that one that it is a little bit stiffer to tear this way so you just want to pay a little bit more attention and um, to where you're pinching it and if you use water you know just be cautious because you've already got uh, paint on the back of it and you know it's chalk paint so water and chalk paint can mix up and you don't want to muddy your image with the water and chalk paint so just be cautious of that but um I didn't have a problem tearing it so it's however it's your preference however you want to do it but as far as these two go um let's see if this is like it dries really fast it takes it, it goes, so it's, it's good. Um, it's not that hard. For this, I just want the full-on image to be on the front of this book. So what I'm going to do is tear this out, and then we'll um, get that on there. And I think I'm going to need that, um, whatchamacallit, behind me. What's that? The ladder. Oh. So is everybody's day going pretty good so far? Right. It's Friday. It is Friday. Yep, and then leading up to Thanksgiving week, so that's always fun. So it's, we will not be live next Friday, nope. um, but we do have some videos 
um, stored up for y'all. So just make sure you hit that notification bell. And um, so that way you can get notified when we do get to get videos and go live and stuff like that. Up. Tina, I use Corel Painter. I use Rebel 6, which Rebel 7 is coming. Also, guys, if you're looking for Corel Painter right now, you can get it at HumbleBundle.com in a project bundle. It's like 30 bucks. You donate money to charity, and you get the full program along with some extra brushes and stuff. So it's a really great deal. I didn't know it until I was looking last night at some other software that they had available. But I, what, Tina, to get back to your question, when I get to the end after doing everything that I'm doing in Rebel or... Uh, Painter, I put everything in Corel Draw so I can actually design it on a page for printing. Which you could do all that in a free program like GIMP or uh, Krita, K R I T A, Krita.org, and GIMP is for G I M P.org. And those are both free. They're really powerful to use, they're just not as intuitive. So it, there's a learning curve, especially for GIMP, because GIMP is almost like a Photoshop clone. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not doing this backwards. Like, is there a right way or a wrong way? Like, that one goes like that. You're you're right, because it, it opens left to right. Yeah. Unless you're in Japan, and it opens right to left. I was just trying to make sure I didn't do it backwards. I'll post a I'll post a link to it in the in the chat, Tina. Okay, so I tore out my image right, and it's going to fit really good on this, but. Because I'm using that antique buttercream um, color, I'm kind of wanting to do something a little bit different um, with this. So if you do this, uh, just use caution and right. Just be very careful. Yeah. <laughs> just be very very careful if you do this. Um, so I just have a lighter, and what I'm going to do is just light it up and blow it. And I'm just singeing my edges. Your edges. Edges. What did I say? Engines. Engines. I'm just trying to make sure I don't burn it. So, yeah, be very careful. And Tina, just in case you're wondering, those are full versions of the software. And that's a fantastic deal. Because, you know, I got it at a discount a couple weeks back. And it was $79 with uh, two premium brush sets. So I, if I would have known that this was going to happen, I would have waited and got it this week. Because you get all kind. I think it's 30, 25 different items i think you get aftershock pro with it too so that's really good you also get video studio pro so if you want to try to make videos video studio is supposed to be pretty user friendly that's not what we use we use cyberlink so, power director let's see if i can just instead of i guess i could i need it to be a little bit smaller Let me see if I can. I don't want to take too much of it off. And I'm just going to light it on fire again and singe up my image. So, what's the purpose of singeing it up like that? So, it's two reasons why I like it. Number one, it gives it that antique look around the edges, right? Real simple. And number two, it takes away all of your frayed edges. 
So those how uh, rice paper can be um, stringy after you tear it, which is good for you know certain projects. But for this project, I didn't want that. Um, so I want it to be kind of like that. So I was like, I'm just going to test it. And I test it and I, I was like, yep, this is what I'm doing. And I think it just looks really good. I think it matches up with the old church and the hymn. So I'm just going to make sure that... So it'll wrap around. So I just, all I'm doing is fitting it to make sure that it is right. And if I tear more, I just singe more. Singe more. I'm wondering if our smoke alarms can go off. I hope not. Now. So be cautious of that. <laughs> so just like that. So can you kind of see it? You see it good on there? How it's singed up? Yeah, you can see it really good. Yeah. All right, so we just take the Mod Podge. And we will... I'm just going to put it in the center. And then I'm going to work my way. And you do that to keep from overworking your Mod Podge, correct? Right, I do that because I'm not trying to cover the whole thing. I'm just wanting to get it tacked in and placed. And then I'm going to work my way up. If everybody's got any questions, don't hesitate to, to hit us up in the comments there. How many um, of y'all have these books? If you're a mated, I bet you have it. <laughs> Tina does. I bet Tina does. I think we knew that Tina did. Yeah. Yeah, she told us the last time she was in the store. Yeah. When I kept forgetting to bring the decoupage paper in. Right. So on your edges, you're just going to want to be careful because you did, you know, if you do it this way, I'm just wanting to make sure to be careful around the edges um, where it's singed up at. Your one edge is lifted. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it. That's a great idea, wrapping yeah, it around the end. Yeah, I'm just going to wrap it. And then right there, there's one sticking up too on the very edge. I'm just going to wrap it. Let me get this part down. And I work out my wrinkle. Look at there. Got a wrinkle. Got a wrinkle. Right. Tamitha says she loves the burned edges. Gives it a much more dimension. I do too. I like it. Yeah, we actually high-fived when you came up with doing that. Yeah, because I was like, I really don't want to... It was, I don't want to use wax. I don't want to antique it that way, and I don't want to do the dry brush. It's not going to turn out right. But mainly, I just didn't want the frayed edges to look like that. To fray even more. Yeah, to fray even more. And I was like, what would happen if I just toasted it? I, I liked it, too. But, yeah. Because we were sitting there trying to figure out how we was going to do it last night all the way into about an hour before we were getting, as we were getting ready to go live. We She finally figured it out. I was of no use. I was trying to come up with different ideas for her, but mine are pretty terrible. No, they're not. They're good. Tamla said it's rustic without being too much. Yeah, it's just enough. Just enough. And I'm going to wrap that. There we go. I'm just going to make sure I got all my edges down. I wonder if the burn will bleed into the, like the color from the burnt paper, if it'll bleed into the buttercream. I think it will and give it a little bit more depth. Like a, a little antique look. Yeah, you know how you have a little yellow? Yeah. 
Just remember, guys, not to overwork your stuff. That is the most important that piece of advice. The most, yeah. All right. Because you're going to hit a point to where you have to say, I'm done yeah, right for right now. Just stop or your touching paper it. will yeah. start fall. It'll start. Rice paper will crumble apart in a heartbeat. Yeah. All right. So there's that. So I kind of wanted that to dry a little bit more. But for the tree, let's see. This is the back, right? So for the tree, I kind of want it to go, I want it to wrap around the side because it's like a two inch side, I think is what it says. Yeah. So I just want to wrap the tree around a little bit and then I want to go this way. So while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and do this paper. And I'm thinking I'm going to burn it too, so that way it's just all cohesive. going together. Yeah. Makes one cohesive look. Yeah, we always try to come up with different ideas on how to use the rice paper. That's why we've been experimenting with layering. We actually got pretty good results on one. So there's my tree. And I'm just going to do the same thing. So like all those edges, like, you know, on some, some projects that you do, those edges just blend right into the project and it's okay. But I just don't think it's going to blend in with the book that well. And not on buttercream. Yeah. I think it's going to, you're, you're going to see that. And the, I mean, you could cut it, but then you have those lines. So I feel like this was the best option and I think it looks good together. If our, uh, if our fire alarm goes off, I will immediately mute yeah. everything. Hopefully it doesn't, as much as I burn stuff cooking. Thank you, Kathy. She said, <laughs> did, did y'all catch that? She said, as much as she burns stuff cooking. You should be used to this now. Only in the oven. You only burn stuff in the oven. Kathy says she loves the tree. All of our images today are beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I love the tree too. Yeah, I added quite a few images this week. Uh, and you're working on um, a bunch, too. I... Yeah, more or less, I'm working on composition with trying to blend the images together, clean images up, colorize images, take real photos and turn them into, image, or turn them into more like clip art, where it's more artistic. There's a lot of stuff out there to do that with. I'm doing it manually right now instead of using AI. So I want my tree to wrap like that. Claire said, I'm glad you can show in the burning again. I came in late. Not sure I trust myself with the lighter. <laughs> it's just be very careful and very quick. Like light it, blow it, light it, blow it. That's because it will, it will, it'll the, go. The it's, rice paper yeah. will go. Um, and I've seen people where they uh, modge, podge it on, right? And then the excess is around. And no, that's normally where I just sand in a downward motion to get the rest of the paper off. Right. But sometimes you can modge podge over like detail, detail. Um, so it you don't want to mess up the detail to get this, the decoupage paper off. Um, and I've seen them where they light it up and they burn it off. But um, the... The Mod Podge and the clear coat, you know, will stop it. It'll like right. it'll just burn the edges that can be burned off. But like so in this situation, um, I'm what basically just burning paper. So yeah, be very careful if you do that. Yeah. So it's basically like singeing strings if you've already got it attached. Right, right. To keep your clothes from unraveling. Right. Okay, so I feel like because I I'm gonna have to take some of this side off. 
just to make it wrap around then again I want it to go like that okay so first thing I'm gonna do is work on this side See if I can get it stuck down so I don't move it a bunch. That would be me. <laughs> Stick it on there and have it slide. Stick it on there the and place. move it around. Yeah. And then get it around the edges. Did you tell them what you finally went and got? What did I go and get? Art, glitter, glue. Oh, shucks. Yeah. <laughs> Bam. Art, glitter, glue. And I've used that so much that since I've got it, I'm like, you can glue anything down with this. How did I not already have it? I don't know. I don't know. It was, that stuff's amazing. And y'all were right. It uh, bonds immediately. Yeah. It didn't take it in no time at all. And she ended up using it on that twine, and it held it down perfect. I've used it a bunch. I, I glued, I used it um, on a piece of scrap wood to another board um, just to see. I just wanted to see, like, how good of a bond is it going to make and how hard is it going to, you know, keep it together. Yeah, I can't pry that thing apart. I'd have to get a hammer and like a flathead screwdriver to try to hammer it off. That I cannot pull it off at all. <laughs> I was I was blown away by that. I was like, well, there's a reason why everybody recommended it, right? And I was like, yep. I left. I literally went to a meme store. Yeah, right after the live ended, we, we and went And I was there. like, I need art glitter glue. And I got it. And the stainless steel pins, too. Yeah, the pins she showed me. And she was right, because the pin itself was gummed up on the top. Um, she showed me exactly how the these things, um, she put that on. Yeah, she's... She got me situated, so I'm ready for it. I'm ready to glue stuff up. So, all right, the front, right? And then my tree is working on its way on its side. Then you still got this whole area, but don't worry, guys, because what I think I want to do is um, take a piece of this and just burn it and put it right how do I want to do it? Because I still need, I want a piece for that too. I kind of just want to tear off a piece or do you think I should leave it like that? I don't know. What do you guys think? I love, I, I love the front. For sure. I now love show the them the tree. back because we're on main camera only. The back. Should we add something in that top corner? I just want to add, I think what I want to, I just want to tear a piece of this off and add it. Like that. Let me just see. Let me cut this here. Now we're going to experiment. Yeah. Hmm. And then Tamitha said yes. Tina yeah. said go around the whole tree with the music paper. Well, 
Well, okay, first thing I gotta do is make sure I put it up right and not go backwards. We did that the other day. I did. I straight up did something completely upside down. Made me so mad when I realized it because it was all the way finished. Like that's it, That the project was done and then I realized that I did the whole entire thing backwards. I was like, dang it. It's okay, it was just a practice piece. That's what I'm telling myself anyways, it's just practice. Let's see, let me kinda. Well, you know, baby birds have to fall before they can fly. I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> well, that's the saying, anyways. Could go like that. But then it'll overlay your bonsai tree. But burn the edges up to make it a little bit smaller. You know what I'm saying? Is that a bonsai or is it a uh, I ficus? Have, I have no clue. I just liked it. Or what's that, that tree that tears up rocks? Like that? Tina said yes. Yes. And then like that. So it's like offset a little bit but layered. Yeah. You gonna burn the edges on that oh, too? Oh yeah. Or did yeah. I already ask that? I bet I already asked it. Yeah. Ask the same questions. I'm very forgetful. As some of you know, I'm very forgetful. Tina knows. <sighs> Tina knows. Yeah, that's looking get really good actually. On that, that burnt, those burnt corners. It changes the whole look to me. Well, see how quick that'll light up. They can't see it because you're not centered up. There you go. You have a lot going on in your lives. Yes, that is true. That is true. Like that. Right? Like that? Yeah, sure. It looks good to me. We'll see. You know, you never know until the project's finished whether or not it's going to look good. Oh, I just blew that off. That's fine. That's just my camera cover. I like it. I think it'll be all right. That's what I think. I put my camera, I put a Ziploc bag over our camera to keep dust from getting on the lens after we're done. It's just, I, I ruined, ruined the camera one time with dust. So I'm overly paranoid about it now, so I just shove a, even though it's got this shutter that shuts, dust can still get in there. But that's the way my mind works anyways. <laughs> I'm going to try to do um, a tour of the store soon because we have so much Christmas in there. So I, And she's really proud of her decorations, too. I got all my trees up and everything, so I'm going to try to do that um, this week or this upcoming week while we're shut down. It's easy to record. Um, while we're doing that. And just oh, show y'all yeah. some of the Christmas stuff that, um, the displays and. Yeah, she did a lot of work on that. That a lot of my vendors been bringing in Christmas stuff. So we had our Christmas open house, which was amazing. And I appreciate everybody who came out and shopped with us. We got a chance to show off our vintage Red Rider BB gun. Mm-hmm. Well, see, that's what I was going to show them in the video. 
Don't spoil it. Don't spoil oh, my bad. Yeah. Don't spoil it. Yeah, don't spoil it. Spoiler alert. I, I should have said that first. <laughs> so you could earmuff. <laughs> earmuffs, guys. Earmuffs. Don't fold on me. I folded it. There we go. So, it's a little bit layered. Let's see if I can get it right here. Any one of those art spatula things. I know. I really like the burned edges and the hems. Remember, the center is where the cross is. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking good, I think. What do you guys think? Is that looking good? I like it. I think it looks good. I'm going to let that one dry up, and then I'll finish up this one and show y'all. Now, this one's different. This one's different. Okay, so... Tina said it's beautiful. Tamitha says she loves it. I love, and I love this color. Um, Stormy Seas, that's this color right here. I, I, I love it. It's, it's very pretty. Um, and I love these flowers. So, my, okay. First of all, I already got this decoupage, so I need to make sure that this is the right side, and then I need to make sure that I'm doing my front to my front. Look. I did it. I did the same thing. If this is the front, I did this upside down. I'm telling you. You've been watching. She's been watching too many Korean dramas, so she thinks she needs everything needs to be written. Everything read needs to be right, backwards. From left to right. I mean, from right to left. Uh, so what do I do? What do I do? I can redo this part. How? Mm. You're going to have two layers. You're going to have a layer of paint that has to go over top of it. You're going to have mm -hmm. a layer of Mod Podge that goes over top of that. Then you're going to have a layer of paper that goes on top of it. So essentially, you're going to triple the thickness. This would be really good binded. binding. Lorna said it's very, that one was very pretty. Thank you. I'm liking it. I really like the burned edges. Y'all should have to, y'all try that one out. Just, again, I cannot stress enough how be careful. Lorna said either way is fine. Kathy said just refold the pages the other direction. So open it from the other direction. Oh. So, like, go this way. Yeah. Well, isn't she a genius? It how makes smart. us feel like those. <laughs> how smart is that? I'm telling you, the inside of this is not my, that's not my department. Look at that. Man, you oh, just fixed the whole entire thing. That's so fantastic. Thank Tamith you so said much. Tamitha yeah. said it won't close correctly. Well, Tamitha. She's right. It will not fold correctly, close correctly. Well, now what? I'm just going to go with it this way. Or just leave it folded like that, and then oh, I, have, this I, I, that'll drive me nuts. You think? Well, my May's doing the inside. She'll figure something creative out with it. I'm gonna be like that. Work with it this way. <laughs> it's a good. If you want it to stand up, it'll work really good. Tam says it's a design choice. If May May's doing the inside, it works because she does it too all the time. All right, thank you. I'm going with that. So I've refolded my pages. So this is my front. This is my back. My writing is going this way. So I'm making sure that this is how it is. This is the one. This image is the one that I think I want to put on the front. You refolded it so it'll close, right? No. Yeah, re refold it back. That's what Tamas is saying. Yeah, there you go. All right, so still, this is my front. This is what I'm going with is the front, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so like I said, I already Mod Podge, I sealed it up, and then I put a thin coat of white paint on it, so I'm just going to um, I'm gonna save myself some tearing. I'm just gonna tear my edges. But like I said, it's when you do it this way, it's a little bit stiffer. It's not hard though. I mean, you can still do it. 
but it's just a little bit stiffer. Nothing to worry about. Yeah, it's because the way the board's made. So the paper has to be folded that way. We're going to go, I'm going to go tear off this VIX inside of it. Do you think you can coffee dye the cut off rice paper? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it'll just soak right in. I can, I want to try that now. You want me to get you some old coffee grinds? They're still in the coffee maker. Yeah. So like it can, um, so it looks antiqued like that. That'd be interesting to know. You would need to um, put it in there and then pull it out and then like hang it to dry. Right? Yeah. Um, and Tamith is right, y'all. The inside, the they added the pages in a way so when it folds down, it makes contact with the inside of the fold but if you do it the other way it will try to contact the binding instead of the fold of the pages so it's like a lip basically it's actually a really great design i'm just pinching off my edges Cleaning it up a little bit. When you seal it up, seal the back of the paper up, and then you paint it, it um, you don't have the, you still have the, you know, it's soft or whatever, but where you tear regular rice paper and it, all the fuzzy stuff, all that is not there when you tear it, like when you seal it up and paint it. And then like where I have it, I'm just going to cut those flowers away. You still going to be able to burn it though with the with the paint on there? Well, I, I wasn't going to burn these because I was going to use Gildan Mark. Oh, okay. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. So I was going to want it like that. Move it towards the center. So I was going to gild and wax all the way around the edges of it. Like that? You don't think so? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. It's just the, the gray background. Is that what it's getting you? Yeah, I don't like so much white on top of the gray. That one's one of those that you fussy cut up. Not necessarily. You can blend in the paint to it on top of it. Yeah, but that'll give a sloppy look if you start hitting around the flowers. Well, that's why you be careful. Lorna likes the gild and wax idea, and I think Tina does too because she said yes. Yeah, I like it. I'm outvoted. You're outvoted. I like that. Let me make sure. Let me go up. Now you are, is that the front or the back? It's the front. Okay. Just want to make sure that you're putting it where you want to put it. Because my... My writing is going the right way, this way. Lorna said maybe a pewter color gilded Ooh, in wax. That one would be pretty too. Instead of gold against the gray. What do I have? I don't have, I have gold. You have gold, you have copper and bronze. Yeah, that's what I have here at the house. And then, I'm just gonna trim off these strings. Do 
Yeah. Just in case anybody's just now coming in, she painted the back side of the decoupage paper. First, she sealed it with Mod, Mod Podge, Podge, and then she painted the back side to so the white, the gray won't try to bleed through the rice paper. Because even when it's when it's wet, it looks pretty good. But when it starts drying up, some of those larger white fibers will show up, and it'll look really, uh, I don't know, sloppy. That's what I'm thinking, like that. Well, since you don't have pewter, you will have, you, I don't know. And then look, if you wanted to, you could. You'd probably need to paint the back side of that white too. Oh yeah, I would have to. Because then, then that would be this side. I like it, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to see. Nope. Can't learn without experimenting. That's for sure. Right? It's all, I mean, in reality, it's all about what you like. <laughs> you just do it how you like it. That's true. Yeah. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. Kind of a little bit too far with my Mod Podge right there. Well, that's what the flat's for. Because I assume you're going to seal it up with flat clear coat, oh, right? Yeah, I'm going to put, I'm going to finish both of them up with a clear coat just to make sure that the paper is sealed up. I don't know. Yeah, We lost Rodney. Yeah, they did actually. I see that. Oh, forward facing camera settings. Deactivate. Activate. Deactivate. Activate. There we go. Did you fix All it? right. I fixed it. Mm -hmm. Yay. Somehow it decided to deactivate the forward facing camera. Because you don't like gilded wax. Because I don't like gilded wax. That's right. I like gilded wax. I just like it to be used certain ways. Let me make sure that I got my spies all up in here. You sure enough got it in there. I did. does stiffen the paper up. Then all you got to do, not, well, you got to do the back of that one. Mm -hmm. Then where it's still loose at, you can use your clear coat to hold it down because you're getting Mod Podge on the paint job. Don't you think? So what I'm wanting to do, so I already gilded and waxed this one around the edges somewhat. I'm going to hit this corner. So, right. Oh. Uh, yeah. Where I keep on. I got that. you. And then put this one here, and then I could put this here. I do like that. That looks pretty good. Mhm. Mm It'll be really easy. I am going to clean up my edges. Which I could burn them. Yeah. Let's 
I wonder if we need some kind of disclaimer. Don't try this at home or something. Just you never know with today's very, world. Very, very, very careful. So I am going to just seal it up with Mod Pods. Does, yeah. Looks like you're doing pretty good there on the screen. And let that dry up and then we'll put that. We'll put a coat of paint on the back of it and um and I'll put it in the center here. So I'll just put it on top if it is a little bit layered. So you know what I'm doing on Mod Podge the back of this. Instead of putting it on the book. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. That way I can make sure I have it all on there. So what she's doing is Mod Podge in the back of the paper because I don't think she's talking loud enough. I might not be. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to Mod Podge the back of it and then place it where I want it to go. Yes. Burn first, then Mod Podge, then paint. Yeah. Because there's like chemicals, I, it doesn't seem healthy. I might not have got to my edges. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Did you gild and wax the edges of those? Of that one? No, you're right. Let me go ahead and gild and wax it because I don't want to get it all over the book. So she needs to gild. She needs to put gilding wax on the area that. Uh, I had it. Here it is. Hiding. She's gonna use gilding wax on the area around the edge where it's frayed. So what I'm gonna do? Let me see if I can push it up. They should be able to see it. I'm gonna switch to overhead camera only. Yeah. So I already tore it. So I'm just going to use the tips of my finger and I'm going to kind of wipe it back and then I'm just going to rub it on the edges. That's the most I can get it zoomed, guys. I apologize for see. that. Yeah. Let me see if I can see it on my phone just fine. I'm just going to go around the edges of it. So I'm just like wiping it off be? first so that way I'm not overdoing it yeah you can see it can you see it good yeah. yeah i had to put my phone on 1080p it keeps dropping down to 360. lorna's right we're adults we're all adults here nobody's playing with a lighter that's right Yeah, you can see it really good on the screen. It's looking good. Yeah. I just love gilding wax. If I can use it, I'll use it. Now I'm buffering. I wonder why. Because I lost cell phone service. That's why. They must be working on our tower. They're always working out here on that one. Ah, yeah, that's good. It's going to go all the way around the edge. And sometimes this stuff seems like it's time consuming. Or it does to me. It don't bother me. Yep, I do see it. Looks good. It looks really good. I like the way the gold gleams. Mm -hmm. Lorna said it's a solar flare. A solar flare? 
Yeah, I read something about there's so supposed to be some really? kind of crazy one here pretty soon. Are you serious? There's always something crazy going on with the space. So I'm just using my paintbrush and I'm just kind of going like a little bit further in. Like blending it where the white is. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. You're softening up. I'm, there you go. I'm softening up my edges without using my finger because, you know, you can go just too far. You don't want to go too far. That's what everybody tells me when I'm making jokes. They're always saying, too far. Too, too far, far, Dad. Too far, Dad. That's what the kids do. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. That's a good thing to blame it on is solar flares. I mean, it, it probably is. I read, I don't know if it was just kind of like a, one of those sensationalism pieces, but there's supposed to be some kind of crazy solar flare coming. The thing about this gilded and wax is that a little bit goes a long way. So like, I'm just using what I wiped off on my finger and stuff. And I'm putting a little bit of it on the paintbrush and just kind of blending it softening up all my edges right here so it looks like that which I can do the same thing here and I'm just gonna do it a little bit more here yeah there's CME a coronal mass ejection Solar X flares. There's been a bunch of them this year, apparently. I had to look that up to make sure it was legit since I had said it. There we go. All right. Yeah, it's looking pretty spiffy. Looking pretty spiffy. That's right, I'm, I'm doing the bottom side, okay. So like that. So I'm just gonna wipe my hands off really good. So I don't accidentally get gild and wax on my book. But honestly, I might outline the book edges in gild and wax. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna apply the Mod Podge to the back of my paper. Yeah, that's looking looking much better on the screen. I feel better about it now. <laughs> it's just that white is such a huge contrast against the Stormy Seas Gray, which is a mid-gray. That's how I would do it. This is not a project where we recommend ironing the piece on. Mm -mm. I like it though. I can honestly probably just go a little bit I should have put some more color bleed around that upper flower that's going to be in the bottom corner like see how it's I added that bleed right there around that I should have added it around that other image now that I think about it these flower images I don't know if she said it earlier but that I'm still designing this and mm -hmm. working on it yeah it's not finished at all Because I really like that bleed on the the bigger image, and I did not add any behind the flowers on the second image. And I think that would make it look a lot better. Yeah. 
cut out on the white some that you're not liking. Yeah. Catherine says she loves the flowers. And by mm -hmm. Catherine, I mean cat. cat. Yeah. Thank you, cat. Lorna said contrast adds drama. It there does. You go. It, it does. It yes. does add drama. I wish there was a way to make it look like the gray was torn into the image itself. You know what I mean? Where the white's bursting through the gray instead of the white sitting on top of it. I think I'm gonna. Or maybe like a rougher tear. I should have gilded and waxed that one. But you know what? It's okay. Yeah, I think a rougher tear would have probably gave a more dramatic appearance. You just go around the edges with a paintbrush. And it'll be all right. Another thing that worked well would have been ombre the book cover. Yeah. Around the image, where the image was going to go ahead of time. That way it fades into the gray. And that's much easier to brush the gray back into. But I don't know. It's all part of the design process, you know? It's really complex. If you don't like it, you don't have to like it. It's okay. No, I like it. It looks good. I'm just going around the edges of this. A little bit on the book, a little bit on the paper. It's all right. Switch back to overhead only. Just a little bit. Yeah, inking the edges with gray would have helped with that. But she likes the shiny. So, I do too. I like the shiny too. Maybe zinc instead of gold would look pretty good. Oh, what color was it that uh, Andrea got? She got zinc nickel. That's what it was. Isn't it nickel? I, I cannot remember. see I'm pretty sure it was nickel whiskeyrelics.com Dixie Bell paints let's see here let's see bells and whistles gilding wax silver nope it was zinc that she got that's okay. the one I opened the can on so yeah zinc would have been Crazy, pretty crazy looking. There's black, bronze. We have copper, gold, and bronze here. We don't have black, silver, or, or zinc. All right. There we go. All right. Back on the main screen. Yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good. It's fading in nicely. I thought about doing a video about my workflow. Like how I do everything. I think that would be an interesting video. Okay. Or for me it would. I don't know about everybody else. What do you mean your workflow? You know, how I... Use all the different softwares to do all the different things that I need to do. Uh, all right. 
all the way from sketching the image out to laying it out, or even how to pre, how, even how I go about composing different elements from uh, images that I've paid for to get them to create the look that I want. You know how like that's a, a single that's a single flowers grouped on top of of vines and leaves to create that that composition. I think that would be cool. You can most definitely see the gold. I think it's pretty. Yeah, see, Lorna says she'd watch it. There you go. It is, I'd have to speed it up a lot, though. Like, I couldn't, well, yeah, I, I, I could do, I could do it in parts. Because it takes me a long time just to do one thing. I kind of just like touching, like, the branches in here, so it gives it a little bit of gold in here, too. Now, that I like doing. Like, when I did the steampunk book. I went in, or the bird on that suitcase, I went in on him and put gold and copper. Yeah. yeah, you know, Tina said that if you can make that video, that would be great. Yeah, for anybody interested in using the software. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean. I agree. I had a little um, thing of white. Little, little, little. Right here. You see it? Yeah. yeah. This is just cotton. That's, that's the leftover from the yeah. all the other stuff we've done. Yeah, it's just cotton. So I'm going to lightly cover my edges, my background. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And you, you can see that the white's not bleeding. The, the lines aren't bleeding through. Yeah. I think the most important part is just light. Like, it doesn't take a bunch. You're just covering it. But the other thing is um, sealing it up with the Mod Podge, making sure that you have it all the way sealed up. So that way, I'm going to flip it over. It's not bleeding through. And I just used, I mean, what I like to do is kind of like put a little bit of paint on my brush and then wipe it back. I guess what I did here is I just wiped off the paint and then went through and did that. Tina, I used to use Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator all the time. I had the master collection. After I graduated from college, I had the master collection because that's what I was going to be was a graphic artist. And uh, I was on a freelancer website doing freelance stuff. I got ripped off on this job. So I, I, I like totally quit. Anytime I get ripped off, I'm done. I don't want to do it no more. Let's put some Mod Podge on the back of this. But yeah, Photoshop is the premier kind of do-it-all kind of software. But for just for digital painting, I'd say Painter or Rebel. I like Rebel because their watercolor effects are amazing uh, as far as if you're painting in watercolor on there. But then I use, uh, like what Claire's talking about, where I tell it to make an image. That's I use AI for that sometimes to take an image and make it look watercolor or I'll use a watercolor filter that's found in Corel Painter or Corel Draw has, I believe Corel Draw has a water filter, a watercolor filter. And that's the advantage of using multiple programs. I, th I think Krita may have that and it's free. I know that GIMP does, but again, GIMP is a, golly, it's a, it's a very powerful program that's free, but it does have a steeper learning curve. 
if they would make a layout more akin to Photoshop, it would be much better. And that was the confusing thing from going from Adobe Illustrator to Corel Draw was the layout was different. But then I downloaded a Illustrator like work work interface, and it made it so much simpler for me to learn how to use Corel Draw. Now Corel Painter, that's a totally different beast. It's different than anything I've ever used, but it, it's it's good. It's really good. Sorry. So what are you doing now? Um. Before I seal it up, I just want to make sure that I don't want to add anything else to anything. I don't want to overdo it. But I was just trying to make sure. So. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. I think I'm just going to leave it. I think I can just seal it up. Yeah, that's what I would do. Just seal it up. So what do you guys think so far? Which one's your favorite folio that she's done? My favorite is going to be the buttercream one with the church. That was your favorite? Yeah, that's my favorite. And the, Claire, the AI program I use is uh, Vision FX by Corel. Claire says she likes the church. Yeah. I like them both, so yeah. Tina can't decide she likes both. I think I think that there's a lot of things you could do on the cover of these books. Well, your two choices getting them from the straight out of the package are white and black. Right. And landscape and photo. And in this instance we're using the photo and not the landscape on both of them. I like the burning of the edges of the decoupage paper. Emily and Kat like the uh, church. They like the church. Yeah. She said the girls at Rusty Relics. The girls at Rusty Relics. <laughs> That's funny. Let's see if I can bend it. See that's one. Of my, that's my area of concern with the with the uh, fold over is is it is it gonna mess up every time you open or close it? Um, well, you could um, take a blade and go straight down, or you could. Do you think it's gonna mess up, or is it? I don't know. It should be flexible enough, as long as you didn't make it super tight. Lorna says she likes both. She's drawn to the florals, though. Me too. Florals. You know, black peonies were the first decoupage drawings that I did. Mm hmm They were also the first papers we ever printed. So I will say that these books are paintable and um, you could mod podge them. They're decoupage them and, and you can paint them so you can do the colors. So um, I think that was one of the one things that uh, we were curious about is, you know, what will it do if you put, if you put the paint in the decoupage on it? Right. Would it wave up or something, you know? Right. Because that would have, a, both of these books will have a layer of um, paint, Mod Podge, and clear coat on them. That one's looking really good. You can't, it, it blended well with the uh, buttercream. So for, I, I'm actually shocked. So the hymnal looks like it's an old book page instead of the white. That's what I was going it, it, for. It, on it that did one. blend really well. Could you do one of your decoupage pages that would cover the whole book, front to back? Uh, I don't I think, think so. You would have to. Because that would be. Um, I think you would have to. It would be 12 inches wide by 8 and a quarter. 
I think you would have to just have uh, three pages, honestly. I think you would have to do, you would have a page that could do the front, and then you could do the side, and then you could roll it over. You could probably do two. Because the front's only six and, a, six and a half inches wide. It's eight and a half tall. Two inches for the binding. You're looking at six, 12, 14. You're looking at 15 inches. So, yeah. That's bigger than legal. Because that would be eight by 14. So you'd have to do at least two pages. Yeah, because two pages would be eight by 16, but you lose a quarter inch margin on each side. So that's a half inch right there. Uh, I don't, I honestly don't know. That's a great question. A custom sized piece, a custom sized piece of paper. But would the printer take it? Right. It's so picky. These are stunning. The church has my heart. And May May has a great stamp that will work with it. See, that's another thing that I was thinking about. Like, there's, like... There's you could add more to it, right? It doesn't have to stop right here. Like you decoupaged it, you sealed it up, right? That's your thing. You're sealing up your paint and you're sealing up your decoupage paper, right? Right. So then after that, I'm gonna set them this way because they're drying with the clear coat. Okay. If you wanna go. Main camera. So after that, you know, then you have the embellishments that you can do. So you could add stamps on top of it. You could add um just, you know, like you could put a key or, you know, you could put the um, those gears and stuff like that, you know, depending on what style you're going with. I mean, there's all kinds of different things you could do with it. And you could fill in the gaps and, and do that whole, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a collage on yeah, the front of well, it. Essentially yeah. what we did with that when we were experimenting with layering the uh, Mod Podge. I mean the, the decoupage paper. But I think one of the, the to me, if we're going to layer decoupage paper, the topmost layer needs to be fussy cut. It needs to be cut as close and trimmed to the edge as possible. But that's just me thinking. Or you could do the burnt edge I like thing. I like how the front of this one turned out really good. Well, yeah, I put the church on top of the, instead of separating yeah. the images. I like how the it's burnt and I just, this, the front you of this one is. So it's not so harsh on the. Is probably my favorite. This one, I feel like could take more stuff like. I think you could add more there stuff to it and layer it on top of what you've got going on. And if you had uh, like uh, if you had letters or like a stamp set and you could add uh, yeah, you could print, especially yeah. to this one in the bare in the bare spots around the white. And I think inking the edges with gray would fading gray into the white would have helped with the 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 sharp contrast yeah i think you could put it probably layer some more stuff on top of this one just a little bit um i think you could i think this one could still be workable as far as like that goes as tamas said the floral needs a gold embossed sentiment that's yeah yeah i don't even know what that is i kind of know what that is i i, I know this could definitely still get some more um, added to it. The front of this, I like. I think it's good. I think on the back side of it, um, I think that there, you know, if you had like maybe a cross it, or something, you, you know, or if you, you would have tore the whole image around that, right, and then had your and and had your words coming all the way up, I think that would have. Like or maybe put that maybe put that down first and then put your tree the tree down that I could have done that I could have done that and then you would have the rough edges and then it would have let and there wouldn't be a blank 
spot in the middle. Just an idea. That's always the hindsight after we do stuff is yeah. we could have did this different or we could have did that different. I think it's still workable though. We'll find out. I mean, Maymay's going to be doing the insides, so that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. That is all okay. I got for y'all today. You take clear ink, stamp, add embossing powder, melt it, and boom. Yeah. Clear ink, stamp it, add embossing powder. She's right. That would look pretty cool. Actually, that would look really cool. I feel like I need to go to my May's store. <laughs> There we go. She's going to May May's after the video. I feel video. like I need to go to May May's store and do some more shopping. I don't know. Or get some ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like this stuff but that Tamitha's talking what about. What we did learn we... is is that you can paint and you can Mod Podge and you can seal these up and the boards, the books are still like good to go. They yep. didn't wave out. They didn't, you know, get weak or anything. So that was interesting. So the first time I've done it, so it, it was turned definitely out pretty well. a learning There's no lesson. bubbling. I don't see where the yeah. cover's lifting or anything. The chipboard held the paint very well. Yeah, it did, and it dried fast, and I did enjoy doing the burning edges of the decoupage paper. So if y'all do try that out, let me know, and just be careful for sure. Yep. I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Yep, that's it. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> You're so funny. Yep. Now next week we're not going to have a uh, live video. I won't have a live next week, but, but I'll have a video out for y'all to watch during your Thanksgiving break. And I hope y'all enjoy your Thanksgiving. I know the store is closed Wednesday and Thursday of next week, so we will be off and we'll be chilling at the house with the kids. Um, so I hope y'all have a good Thanksgiving. Yeah, we're going to be cooking chicken and dressing. Yep. So enjoy, eat, rest. And if you have to work, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's it. Yep, that's it. We will catch you guys on the flip yep. side. Y'all be good. Be thank careful. You. And thank y'all for coming by. Tamil says subscribe, like, and share. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's something we always forget to say. So. All right. Thanks, guys.